What's happening, YouTubers? It's your boy CB, and we are back for my favorite segment on the channel, Huddle Watch Alongs with Recruits. On today's episode, for you guys that like offensive football, for you guys that like quarterback play and the deep ball specifically, this is your episode. You have clicked on the right video, my friend. I don't know how we found you, but you are in the right place. 2026 four-star quarterback Quinn Murphy has a cannon attached to his right arm. Super accurate. But what people may not see when they watch the initial highlights is he's a complete quarterback, dual threat, just as dangerous on the ground as he is within the pocket, poised and wise beyond his years. You can see he's calm, under pressure, accurate on the move and off platform. But you don't want to hear me tell it. You want to hear it from the superstar himself, fresh off of a Miami visit and viewing the Miami spring game. Four star quarterback in the 2026 class, Quinn Murphy. How's it going, bro? Good. How you doing? Hey, not too bad, man. Enjoying this Sunday. How is how is your weekend going? It was really cool. I got down to uh, Miami Friday and then spent the night with Coach Dawson, spent morning with Coach Dawson, then obviously watched spring game and then spent the night with Coach Dawson again. So spent a lot of time with the staff and spent a lot of time with the team. And it was just a great overall weekend. So for a Texas boy going to, to Florida, how was that? How was the climate? How was it? Did you feel like it was comparable to being in Texas? Yeah. So it's a little bit hotter in the winter there than it is in Texas. So I had a little jacket on and I get off the plane. <laughs> it was about 90 degrees. So it was a little bit hotter there, but the weather was beautiful throughout the weekend. It was, it was really cool. And for your your first time getting down there, seeing that campus, experiencing that, before we touch on the coaches, how was that experience just being there, getting to see the campus, getting to see the players? How was that experience down at Miami this weekend? Yeah, so one thing Coach Dawson was super big on is just recruits need to go come see Miami before, you know, even such things as committing or making a decision or making a top five or top ten without or with them in the discussion is – you need to come see the place. And after I went and Love saw that. it, you know, you can understand why he really pushes recruits to go visit because it's in Coral Gables, with mo which most people don't know. And it's a super special place. It's a really beautiful campus. The whole time I was thinking it looks like almost like Hawaii or like California. <laughs> they call it the uh, they call it like the, the Palos Verdes of California or something like that. So it's a, it's a really awesome place. It's uh, I had another co uh, recruit on. He was like, I can understand how people get confused here because you start walking around and you're like, I'm in paradise. Like, this is not a mm -hmm. football or, or a college. I'm actually in paradise. So a name you mentioned there, Coach Shannon Dawson, offensive coordinator and quarterback coach of the Miami Hurricanes. What's that relationship been like with you and Dawson building since that offer and obviously continues to grow with this visit and future visits as well? Yeah, so he offered me um, last June, um, like mid-June. It was after like I was it was actually after a Texas A&M camp. Um, we've been we had been in a communication for a little bit and you know, I just keep on calling him because, you know, he's a really cool guy. I love to be around him because he's not allowed to call me because I'm um, 26, 26 yeah. this summer. So, you know, we were having our weekly call, weekly checkup. And then out of the blue, he was just like, you know, I brought in specialists to come watch your film because I don't normally offer kids when I haven't seen them throw in person. But, you know, I'd like to make an exception with you because I, your film is super special and so we're going to offer you a scholarship, but I really want you to come down to Miami. And so he came down for um, this past winter um, and watched me throw um, with some of my guys in my school. And that was a great time. We had a great throwing session. He was super complimentary. Him and coaching staff in my school got along great. And then he was like, I really want you to come down to Miami, see Coral Gables. And so I came down um, Friday and Saturday, and it was just – everything you could want to visit. It was awesome. And he's going to come see me again for spring ball. And then hopefully I'll be back up there soon. 
What was it like getting to see his offense in person? Because I'm sure through those weekly calls, y'all are he's telling you what it looks like or what it's going to look like and how the quarterbacks are comfortable. We push the ball down the field. But then you get to see it in person with, you know, nobody in your ear. There's there's no bias. There's, you get to just see the offense. What was it like getting to see his offense after hearing him tell you what it would look like? Yeah, it was it was awesome. I mean, he comes from a an air raid family of you know, quarterbacks, his, he looks good when the quarterback does good. And that's a big oh, part yeah. of why <laughs> Miami went out and got Cam Ward from Washington state. And, you know, he had a lot of hype around him, but I sat down and me and uh, Luke nickel, the four-star commit in the 25 class boy. we spent the weekend together. Um, and he was a super cool kid, but he sat down and we watched about 70 clips of Cam Ward and the other quarterbacks in practice, just going over each clip in detail of, formation plays routes and then watching cam and the other quarterbacks make some really impressive throws that was just really awesome to see you know what he was telling me over the phone just kind of like speaking to existence when i was there and i was super surprised in a good way um about him and his offense and he likes a dual threat guy too you saw that a lot at houston that he does like a guy that can make plays with his legs that can escape and just extend the pocket to give your receivers an extra chance. How much do you feel like your skill set and what you do right now translates to what Shannon Dawson wants in a quarterback? Yeah, from what we talked about, I mean, he thinks my ability and how I, you know, I'm a throw first guy, but, you know, when I need to get 5, 10, 15 and break one, it's definitely, it's definitely an option. So he loves that about me. He loves how I'm a pass first guy and I'll go through my progression and then, once the progression's done with, because defense will, will sometimes win the play too, you know, he uh, he loves how I'm able to extend plays and, you know, if needed, pick up seven and make the next down easier on him. It, it's that just that added dimension you make the defense think about and the defensive coordinator think about too. And and I, I like that for some people that watch the film, they probably turn it off early and they're like, all right, gunslinger. If you leave that thing on, you'll see that Quinn, Quinn got scoot. It's just that, like he said, pass first in his mind so even a lot of times he uses that athleticism to just extend give guys just another maybe half second to get open another second to get open but I like that that part of your game translating really well to what Shannon does and when you watch a lot of what Cam Ward has success with in the spring game it is those plays where he can make something out of nothing sometimes when they break down extending but keeping your eyes downfield giving your receivers another chance so before we move on to other schools, I got to ask about head honcho. Do you remember that first interaction with Mario Cristobal and what that was like? Uh, so we were we were supposed to talk to Coach Cristobal over the when we visited there. Um, but the spring game, it was it got a point to it was a little bit rushed. And at, afterwards, we were talking to Coach Dawson. He was like, so how was y'all's conversation with Coach Cristobal? And he was asking us questions about it, but we actually never got to talk to him. So that was that was something next that time. Coach Dawson wanted to. Yeah. So next time is definitely what I'll be looking forward to with that. So now we definitely got a reason, Dennis. We got to re- we got to bring him back down because he got a he got to chop it up with Coach Cristobal. Uh, obviously, right. I know I know he's seen the film, but like you said, those those Saturdays, those spring game days for a head coach are probably just so hectic, mm-hmm. media after and all that. But I what I love though is. You got to experience the culture in person. You got to see what a Shannon Dawson offense looks like. You got to see him coach live because, you know, sometimes a guy can tell you how he is, but you get to see him, you know, with live bullets. You get to see how does he look when a when a quarterback misses a throw. When you saw one of the young guys, he threw a pick six. So you want to see, okay, how does he coach him up? I like that you, you got to see that in person and got to get like a real like, you know, honest 10 foot away assessment of Mm -hmm. this is going to be my coach for three to four years. If I, if I choose him, I want to know what is it like on the bad place too? Not just when I, when I drop a dime, what is he like when I miss a read? So I like that you got a chance to get to see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was super cool. And I'll be honest, like from a recruit perspective, like you go to the spring, you go to the spring game. Yeah. To watch like Miami put on a show and watch cam go do his thing. But that was a big thing I was watching was how, you know, every single good, bad play, I would just look at Coach Dawson. And that was one thing I was super surprised about is, like, after every, like, bad play you could say that, like, a quarterback made, he just 
everything was just like next play. One of the one of the things that he kept on saying to me was just next play, next play. Like when you play in an air raid offense, when you throw the ball 60 to 80 percent of the time, you're going to make mistakes. But at that same time, you're going to have to make big plays to win the game. And he was just really good about having that next play mindset. And the night before the spring game, he was really big on that. And so I was really intrigued to see how, you know, how he would coach that the next day. And then it was nothing short of next play um, when I was watching the spring game. He was a super cool dude, super laid back on the field. And that was just really surprising to me, especially because you never really know what you're getting when you go to a spring game. And you obviously like those quarterback coaches to have some kind of patience, right? Because this mm-hmm. is the guy that's going to be developing you. So I want to I want to make sure that when you say next play, you actually mean that. So, mm-hmm. you, so I love that you got to see that. That's winning mentality. And when we talk about winning mentality, I have to bring up this next school. An offer that came in before the Miami offer, but mm-hmm. one that's cool for several reasons. Not just the number yeah. you wear, that it's akin to their starting quarterback last year. The Michigan offer, getting that from the reigning national champions, but it wasn't just the offer that I want to highlight. You went down there for a camp and absolutely showed out, stole the show, and got a chance to have a throwing session after. Let the listeners who may not be familiar with that story know what that process was like. Yeah, so I'd been – Coach Campbell and Coach Sinagoga were – they had been in contact with me since the spring of my freshman year. Um, they really, really liked my my freshman varsity film. And so after that, they sent me, you know, a little graphic because, you know, again, it's hard for them to communicate with me. So, you know, I just called them and um, I got their information. And since that, I got down to their camp. And then on the phone, he was like, let's get you in a few hours early so I can see you really throw um in person with no distractions around so i got in there about nine ten o'clock and we had just a really good throwing session um just me another kid in the 26th class and then coach campbell and coach Sinagoga, and that was it and he just videoed every throw and um it was just a great time and then right after that there was about an hour break and then i went straight into the camp um talked to coach harbaugh for a little bit back when he was there um that was a really cool experience and then right after the camp, I got to watch the practice. They had like a little walkthrough practice, nothing crazy, but just got to see the quarterbacks operate a little bit. And then after that, he was like, look, give me a call Wednesday. And so I gave him a call. We talked for a good bit. And then we called again like the day after, and that was when he offered me. And it was a really that's cool awesome. experience because that's one of those where it's not like you get you just get a call and then they give you an offer. You really walk through the whole experience. And then – Um, After he offered me, he also he came down or uh, his name's EJ from on three. He came down in the fall of last year to come see me and check up on me to tell me a few things about Coach Campbell and what he was thinking of me. And then Coach Campbell actually came down this winter to watch me throw with a few of my guys. So I've I've built up a really good relationship with them and um, they've been great so far. How how awesome is it knowing that? when they looked at that film and watched you throw in person, that they it almost immediately were like, okay, let's get this offer in and let's at least start getting our hooks in him, into him. And the reason I say that is they were led for the past few years by J.J. McCarthy, who means more to that football team than just a quarterback. He was the heart and soul of that team. So you know they value a different style of quarterback, leaders, guys that can be more than just stats. So when you look at a staff like that and then they see you and go, okay, he could be that next guy. How much does that mean to you? It means a lot, especially coming up after a national championship year. I mean, that offer only means so much more. And then on top of that, like another reason I think that, you know, I'm high on their board is because I have a similar play style to JJ McCarthy. Maybe I know I passed it a little bit more, but we got that running ability to when it comes up, you know, it's definitely used and, that's definitely a big reason why I think I'm on their board for the 26th class. Yeah, but when I when you watch the film, too, it's not just the pictures because y'all do kind of look alike in pads. But yeah. when you watch you, obviously, I don't mean it's to discourage JJ or just a bit stronger arm on you. Then that's not really his calling card. But the ball mm-hmm. placement, you see that the calmness mm-hmm. in the pocket, the ability to lead on the field with just body language when you're watching you. It's very similar to him. But before Mm -hmm. we get into the film, there's another school I have to bring up because being in Texas, 
This offer is huge for me, and I'll explain why. Baylor giving anybody an offer means two things. One, you're elite on the field, but it also means you're elite in the classroom. For those of you that don't know, Baylor is, it's your Stanford's. It, it is your school where those are true student athletes. You have to be elite in the classroom to get that offer. When you get an offer like that, how cool is that to see that you're, you're getting it done on both fronts? You know, that's true student athlete when that Baylor offer comes through. What was that like getting that offer? Yeah, so when I got my Baylor offer, I was at the school I was at previously, Regents. And, you know, they Baylor has really been awesome with me so far on my recruitment. I built up a really good relationship with Coach Bell, who's now at Houston, Coach Holcomb, who's the quarterback assistant, and now Coach Bavidal, who I really like, who came over from Cal. He's developed a bunch of great quarterbacks. But when I got offered by Coach Bell and Coach Holcomb, I mean, we went through really a whole process. We 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 still call about once or twice a week. Um, I get on the phone with him a lot. I really love talking love to that. Coach Holcomb and now Coach Bavidal. And then one thing that, you, like you said, about how they really take pride in, I got a wristband somewhere in my house that says person over player that I always wear. Um, that's from Baylor. It's because they really value the person that including academics as well. And, you know, when they offered me one thing they made sure that happened was my athletic director at my old school had to send them my transcript over oh, to yeah. make sure that my grades were in check before they offered me. And so that just kind of like make sure the legitimacy of the offer is up to, up to par as well. And, that's something I really appreciate from them is, you know, they don't value just your ability on the field. And obviously that's important, but they also value you as a person, um, how you lead. And then obviously you in the classroom too. It's those offers that like, I, I always say I'm super proud when I see you guys get the Baylors, get the Ivy leagues. I mean, like we know you're a D one prospect. Like, you know what I mean? We know mm -hmm. that, that you can do that. But when we see the Baylors, the Ivy league offers that lets, it lets us know Football is not just what he's elite at, or football is not just what he he strives to be special at. He is a complete student athlete. You they they care just as much about the transcript as they do that 40 time. Don't get it mm -hmm. twisted. They need both. They need yes. you to run the 4-4, but they also need the transcript as well. So I had to highlight that because that one is huge. And for yes, those sir. of y'all that are like, I have not seen his film, I gotta see the film. One of the best deep ball throwers you will see, regardless of class. But I have to ask, Quinn, what is your favorite route to throw? Um, I got two in mind. One is just, obviously, you see in my first two clips, it's just this go ball. One, because I can throw it a bunch of different ways based upon the leverage of the corner or the safety. Um, it's really an unguardable route if you know how to throw it the right way and you got a receiver who could do it. Um, because, you know, corners over top, say this over top, you can put it back shoulder or right over his head like I do on that second one or on the first one. You feel like he's got a one step ahead. That's all you need on, an, on a corner if you got a got um, an elite route catcher doing his thing. So that first one was really cool. One, because they just went down and scored um, on that first clip. They went down and scored in about one minute, and so we needed to – to fire back and this was the third play of our oh, ball that's how you respond yeah and that game was really cool we we lost that game but it was about 55 to 45 or something like that Ooh. so that was a really fun game as a quarterback how much do you enjoy those games when when your offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator turn and look at you like hey uh i know this is a team thing but not today Today we yeah. need nine. Like, I'm sorry, bro. We can mm -hmm. play some defense next week. <laughs> like, we need yeah. you this week. It just is what it is. How much did you enjoy those shootouts? It's definitely what you look forward to as a quarterback, especially when, you know, when you're down by 7-10, you got to really allow the quarterback to be successful. And that's what my team did that game. I think we threw close to 50, pass, 50 passing attempts and had close to 400 yards and six total touchdowns that game. So that was definitely one to remember is they were one of the best teams in the division above us. One of the calling cards of your arm talent is the ball placement, Quinn. Mm -hmm. This ball here is one of those, no, 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 oh, okay, balls. <laughs> but this tells me two things, not just the confidence in your arm, but the confidence in your receiver too. You knew I got a tight window, but if I put it on him, he'll reward me. Speak to that confidence and connection you have 
or had last year with some of your receivers? Yeah, so, I mean, that play right here, that wide cross play, it's really just – it's a progression read, comeback, cross, post. And, you know, I, I see the play side safety comes down a little bit to help out on the comebacks. And so I know I'm going to have a window. And all I got to do is put the ball in front and let my tight end go win the route. And that's exactly what he did. Um, you know, the window's tight, but, you know, through all the reps and, you know, even the offseason and practice, we rep this place so much that I knew if I just gave him a chance, he'd be able to make a play. And that's exactly what he did. And that was also at the beginning of the game. And this play right here really just set the tone for that game, which is really cool. For, for a young quarterback, understanding in his progression, all right, let me freeze that safety just for a second. I don't need – 10 minutes. I need split second. I need you just to make one false step. And I can do that with my shoulders. I can do that with my eyes. But for a young quarterback to recognize that, that's being wise beyond your years. The reason mm -hmm. I bring that up is you got thrown into a fire very early as a quarterback. Playing high school football in Texas, varsity football as a freshman is no joke. What was that experience like for you? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of funny to play against this right here, this wide cross play. They were, they were my first game my freshman year. Really? Um, and they have one of the biggest stadiums I've ever played in, and they pack, this, <laughs> they pack it out when, they, when you go play there. there. It's a team called Central Catholic out of San Antonio. Um, sadly, I'm not going to be able to play them again because I transferred and moved up a division. Um, but that game was really just something special. Um, the bond I built with that seniors that year, being a freshman, they really just – Help me each week to be the best player I can be to put my team in the best position to win it, the, the, the best games, the most important games. And, you know, that one last year was uh, started off a little bit slow and even got a few overrated chance. But after the second drive, I don't think we did it not score one drive. So we ended up winning that game by two touchdowns and um, got, I think it was the Valero player of the game, which that was just a really cool experience and a really cool introduction to high school football. Now, here we see that the dual threat, the ability to get just as wicked on the ground. So y'all saw him air it out and y'all are probably thinking, all right, y'all said dual threat. I told you, you got to wait a second because obviously you want to prioritize what you can do inside the pocket. But what I love about your ability on the ground is the elusiveness and the vision. You're not yep. just a guy with just some speed, elusive and then you got you got a little bit of fullback in you where you're not just ready to go down. You you, you yes, finish sir. your runs. How much do you enjoy getting to just be an athlete sometimes and getting out there and making a play like this? For sure. When I was little, I was a multi-sport player. I I played defense and lacrosse. I uh, was I played basketball, Ooh. but I was never really that good on offense. I, I was normally a defense rebound kind of guy. And you know, some traits that get lost in quarterback, you know soft doesn't want to take hits doesn't want to put his body in the line for his team and that's just kind of that's not really what i stand by uh, when the ball gets in my hands and i'm past the line of scrimmage um, i don't really look to get down i just kind of run and you know i'm looking to get as many yards as i can i think that really just came from a foundation of when i was little just always trying to be a baller on whenever whatever sport that is and that's what i really love most about being a quarterback you the ball's in your hands every play and you know, what you do with this, your decision. So when I get the ball in my hands past the line of scrimmage, I, I really enjoy just, you know, hitting the defense in the mouth a little bit. What's the what, what's the sideline like when, when you get a play like that, finish a run strong like that, they see their QB1 putting his shoulder down? What's the sideline like after that? Yeah, it really just earns the respect of the team. You know, quarterbacks, like I said earlier, they're known to be, you know, a little soft, a little, you know, however you want to word it, but when, when the defense, when the coaches, the D.C., when they see you putting your line out for the team, it really just motivates, you know, like you said, the sideline. It motivates the defense for the next drive of it to say, okay, he's putting his body on the line. Like, let's do the same thing on defense. So I really just – I really enjoy doing that, just kind of boost the team up one and two, just give, give us a little bit more momentum going into the next series. Yeah, everybody then starts like, all right, now I, I'm running somebody over to Quinn running people over today. Like we I'm running somebody over to it gets everybody just that little bit more hype. And when we talk yes, about sir. dual threat quarterbacks, one of the the quarterback coaches of a school that you visited recently is a former dual threat quarterback from unironically or ironically, the University of Miami. 
you've gotten a chance to go down to SMU and build a relationship with their quarterback coach, Derek King. What's that been like? Yeah, so I got an offer from SMU um, late my freshman year. Um, I got offered by um, Jonathan Brewer. He's now the – he moved schools, but he came down and watched me throw, and he offered after that. Um, but as soon as Coach King got the uh, quarterback job, we had been in great communication ever since. You know, we never really lost a step from the transition there. We just kept on building the relationship. And I actually went over to SMU um, – for I believe it was my first visit this year, and I got to see uh, Coach King and him in action, and he's a great coach. One thing that's really special about him is I believe he's only 25, a little maybe over 25 years old, and it, when you're talking to him, it really just feels like you're talking to one of your players, and it's a really, really unique and really cool experience that not many players get to experience besides the dudes at TCU, and he's just a great overall coach. He's got great energy, and He'll even take some reps in practice just to sling it around a little bit. So that uniqueness of him is – it's awesome. It's really cool to be around, and he's definitely a great guy who I look – when I when we get on the phone, I definitely look forward to it. And you know he can relate to you. Like you said, he's a younger coach, you know. So he's gone through the same steps you've gone through not too long ago. So Mm -hmm. just just talking football, just talking the process – You know, he's somebody you can relate to like, oh, yeah, coach, I'm a little tired because I had to fly over here. I had to go do this visit. I got seven on seven. And he can be like, man, I remember those days, dude. This is what I used to kind of do to try to unwind after that. And, you know, that's somebody that just five, six years ago was in this same exact grind as you. So I I like that you have that relationship with him, too, not just on the field, but as well as off the field. The reason I kept rewinding this play. The ball placement, but also the ability to understand I will throw it in a position that I know my guy will be in. I call sometimes I call these trust balls. These are I know my guy balls. Mm -hmm. I know my guy will break loose and get free. That's timing, but that's also work for young quarterbacks out there. Explain that process of getting timing down with your receivers and how much work it takes. Yeah, I mean, really, timing is everything. The better competition you play and the better teams you go against it really doesn't matter um you know how good your dudes are how good your arm talent is it really all comes down to timing because if you're late on a ball you're you play against good enough dudes where they're going to make a play on it and you know timing is really everything that's why the work in the offseason matters so much and why almost every single high school college and nfl coach says like you know you got to take your offseason um as serious as it was you know game speed game speed game speed that's all you hear and it's really important just building the timing with your receivers, building that um, chemistry with them is just as important as anything else on the field. And it really shows in games. And that's what I really love about playing this game is it's not just during the season, but it's also in the off season as well when you see championship level teams. It's all that work that people don't see that goes into plays like this. On a play mm-hmm. like this, Quinn, your ability to stay calm, stay poised, even under pressure – where does that come from? It really just comes in, you know, this is my second year. So I had a, uh, I had a good a bit of experience because I played varsity as a freshman. So you start to understand, you know, on that play right there, you can feel I got a little bit of a, a backside pressure from looks like the A gap there. And you see him coming through and, you know, you got you just got to keep your eyes downfield. So I start to drift left a little bit and then the right tackle loses his block. So that's when you got to step on your horse. But Staying calm under pressure, you got to realize right here it's, it's third and ten. So you getting three yards on a run isn't going to do anything for a team. So you got to step back, keep your eyes downfield, and make a throw and trust your receiver. And that's what we did right here. This processing in real time means at some point from that freshman first start to this play here, the game started slowing down for you a bit. When for do you sure. feel like that happened? Honestly, I mean, I don't really feel like there was a switch where it just clicked. I think it really just comes from game preparation. If you understand coverages and you understand, you know, where the defense is going to be on every single play, it's almost like, you know, you heard the term, you know, chess, not checkers. And yes, it really just comes down to, you know, if if you know where they're going to be and you're able to out outsmart them on every single play, it's like, you know what they're going to do before they even do it. And, 
that's just where I started to realize the importance of watching film and really being a student of the game first. Um, and when you start learning that as a player at any position, not even just quarterback, it really just comes into play in your in your actual game film too. Are there some pro and or college quarterbacks that you like to watch to take a little bit from, you know, it, obviously you don't, you're, you're the, I always tell people when they're like, oh, well, who is he? Well, Quinn Murphy is the first Quinn Murphy. He's not the second anybody. There's never been a Quinn Murphy before, but you can take a little bit from here and there to kind of Frankenstein yourself as a quarterback. Who are some of the guys you like to watch to study from? Yeah. So in college, you know, there are a plethora of guys who I really like model, model my game after one. We talked about a little bit already. Um, JJ McCarthy, he's really a guy. He plays under center most of the time. So, you don't get really to see his ability from shotgun as much. But when he does get back there, you can see his ability to, one, throw the ball, and then, two, use his feet when he's able to. And that's that's who I really compare myself to on the collegiate level. And then in the pro level, a guy who's kind of made a big step lately is Jordan Love. Um, he's got a really quick release, really twitchy release, and that's how I really see myself. Um, you know, he's not – it's one of those guys who, you know – this this question gets asked frequently to a lot of you know recruits when they get asked, and you see Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, those answers are a little bit easy. So when I try to really study game film from NFL college players, I try to look for players who have had to grind it out a little bit. And I Jordan Love that. is one of those dudes who's had to work his way up in the ranks, you know, after having having not as much success in the beginning, but really took a big step for the Packers this year. And I personally think he's going to be a great franchise quarterback for them. I think so, too. One of the things I love about that is you were like, like, I like to study quarterbacks. Obviously, I'm going to study the best, but I also want to study the ones that transformed their games and that got better because mm -hmm. then you can see why or, you know, what part of their game were they lacking? How did they address, you know what I mean, having bad footwork? How, how did he address okay. that? And, and how did that get so much more crisp? I like that for you. It's like, yeah, I could obviously just sit here and watch Dan Marino <laughs> like all day yeah. long. But For I sure. also want to watch that guy that threw 17 picks last year and now he only threw five. I want to yep. I want to see the progression. Mm -hmm. Also, something you mentioned is your release. One of the smoother deliveries that, that I've seen. Where does that come from? Is that is that some baseball in the past? Where, where does that smooth delivery you have come from? This is kind of funny. When I was little, I was a. Uh... I was a swimmer. I never really played football. When I say little, really? I started playing football when I was like five years old. But from one to five or something like that, I was a really good swimmer. And, you know, That's being a swimmer, yeah, it's a little bit boring when you, you know, you're at the hotel, you're in the pool, you got nothing else to do. And so I, when I was little, I would just throw a little pool ball around and kind of mess around with my buddies. And then that's when I started to really fall in love with the game, you know, that release. I think it really just comes from – me like messing around when I was little and then that's crazy once I kind of realized once I kind of realized that I could spin it a little bit I put a lot of effort for it I mean it's been 11 years now since I picked it up and started playing it um and that release is something I really take pride in I really take pride in having a quick twitchy release and just being able to get the ball out from any arm angle at any time and that's something that I've really noticed especially you know being a Miami fan like you are coach Dawson really loves is Love having a quarterback it. who can make any arm angle, any throw, and that's a big part of why they went out and got Cam Ward last year. It's uh, obviously – it's not just for, – for young quarterbacks out there, it's like, I'm just going to run out there sidearm now. It's not just being able to drop your arm, but it's not losing any of the – like you said, the twitchiness from your delivery, not losing mm -hmm. any accuracy. It's still being smooth, still being as accurate, still having the ball placement – when you are playing around with different arm angles. It's one of the things I always loved about watching Matthew Stafford. I could just watch yeah. Matthew Stafford all throws for hours because you get so many different arm angles, but what you still get is the accuracy. You still get the power too. You don't you don't see them sacrificing any strength behind that arm. Very much yeah. what you see on your tape too. So there's mm -hmm. something I, I I have to talk about when we talk about arm talent and one of the things that puts you through probably some of the most insane throws that you'll ever make is the Elite 11 competition. How was that experience yeah. for you getting out there and getting to compete with other elite quarterbacks? Yeah, so the Elite 11 competition is, is one of, if not the best, quarterback camps out there. One, you get to see kind of where you rank among the other best in the nation. 
And two, it's just really a, a great way for you to get out of your shell and just kind of build relationships with other quarterbacks. And I, I always love the camp. Coach Stump does a great job of running the whole thing. He's a great guy as well. Um, just a normal football dude who just loves ball. And you can talk it with him at any point in time. And that's something I really liked. I've started to build a really good relationship with that guy. And, you know, I really don't take it for granted because clearly he knows a lot about ball. Um, and that camp is really special for one of two reasons. One, you know, like I just said, early building relationships. And two, like what some people might not know is every single throw from there is filmed. And those those films go to every every single college coach in the nation. Um, and that's something I really love about it because you're not just going out there to I can't I couldn't advance the nationals because I'm not a I'm not a going in my senior year. But that's the main reason I go. Is so, you know, court, some coaches love to see you throw in person and it's like, yeah. All right, well, here's me throwing in person, but not really in person, but you get to kind of see, you know, kind of a preview of it before you come and really see me throw. Um, and it's and a pro day me. workout too. Yeah. So, and the throws there, I mean, they're, you know, college NFL type throws because that's the standard that he coaches to. And I really love the camp. I went through it. This would be my second year and I'm, I'm going back to it next year and hopefully going to make punch my ticket. I love that. I like that. It's like, all right. So the goal for everyone going out there is nationals and you can't make nationals yeah. yet, but you're like, I'm still going to compete though. Like mm -hmm. this is still about competing and getting better for me. Whereas some quarterbacks may go, oh, you know, let me wait till my, to, till next year. Cause that's when I can really make an impact at elite 11. But for you, it's like, nah, see ball. I will throw ball. It doesn't matter where y'all want me to do that. One of the things I love to ask any recruit, because a little bit of what we talked about beforehand is the sacrifices you guys have to make. It's yep. missing school dances, missing functions, missing birthdays. You know, your friend's throwing a party. Can't go. Sorry, you got a seven on seven tournament. Yeah. It's all these things that I don't think we consider when we're fans. Mm -hmm. On those days, bro, when, you know, you got to wake up at seven and throw, but you're sore, you're tired. You had to study all night. You had to do a podcast with me. What is it? that keeps you motivated on those days when your body tells you you can't, but you know, you got to keep moving. Yeah. I mean, something funny that you just kind of brought up that kind of brought my thoughts to mind is last, last, I guess, two weeks ago when I was elite 11, that was actually my prom weekend and I was going to go with some See? of my buddies, but you know, I chose to go to that instead. So that's just kind of a little bit example of it. But I mean, for me and for most other recruits who really just love the game, it's, it's really simply that, I mean, there's nothing really I'd rather rather do um, than just go to the field. I'm actually right after this going to go throw with one of my receivers. <laughs> um, it's just it's just like the love of the game that really just kind of takes control. And it's not really you kind of view it as, oh, I have, you know, 7 a.m. saying at 7 a.m. lift tomorrow morning or, oh, I have to throw twice today or, oh, I got to go lift two times a week, two times a week or two to three times a day, not a week. Um it's really just the love of the game that you kind of flip your mindset a little bit. And then and then once you do that, you don't really think about it as I have to, I have to, it's, you know, it, it's, you want to, because it's the steps you got to make to make it to the next level. I love that. I love that. It was, it was not as have to is a weird way to say it. So I love that you were like, no, it flips. Yeah, it's, I don't have to do any of this. I actually want yeah. to. Yeah. I'm sore. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm tired. Yeah. I'm, I'm here doing this interview, but I still want to get the work in for the day. Where does that sure. come from, bro? That, that very measured, very mature way of looking at the journey. Where does that come from? Yeah, I mean, I think, I honestly, I think it's just, one, it's just like God's gift. He blessed me with this, like, ability to throw the ball, one, and then two, like, the work ethic. Like, I don't really get sick of watching film, practice, being around all my guys, Let's lifting. Go. And that's just, that's just one thing that I think you can't really work at is loving the game. It's either you got it or you don't, and you can fake it till you make it, but the game football will, will cut out the fake people or people who don't really love the game itself. You don't really have to say it. Yes. Sir. You know, your work and your work ethic really just proves that the ball don't lie, right? The mm -hmm. ball don't lie. My coach always used to say the ball gone fine. Whoever's whoever's slacking and the ball does not lie. That first play where you're yeah. like, all right, well, they're not running my way. I'm not blocking that running back. Just cut back. And now, yeah. now they, now they running right up your back. So I love that. That is even when they're not looking, the ball don't lie. And what you put yes, into sir. this game is what you get out. Mm -hmm. Saying that, bro, I don't care what it is you decide to do. If you like, you know what, 
pool being in the pool was kind of dope. I'm gonna do that now. Quinn, yeah. I firmly believe you're gonna be a four star pool athlete, quarterback, <laughs> whatever that takes. Cause it's that 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 work, that mindset of literally right when I finish this, I'm gonna go get some work in. It's Sunday mm-hmm. night and you got school tomorrow, but it's still let me get in. If I can just get in one more session just to get that much better for the day, that kind of dedication, it doesn't matter what you put it to. That's why your grades are like that. That's why you're the leader you are, because it's not just what you do on the football field. You take that mindset and you spread it out to everything you do. And that's what makes you elite, an an elite person. And then in turn, an elite player, bro. Thank you so much for doing this. I cannot wait for your junior year so you could, by the way, 3K and 50 last year. For those of y'all that don't know, he threw for over 3,000 yards and 50 touchdowns. This year, I'm hoping to see 4K. And after Mm -hmm. that happens, we're going to have you back on so we can watch that film so we could talk about a fantastic junior season you had. But until then, let them know where they can follow you on Instagram and Twitter so they can keep up with you for your junior year. Yes, sir. My Insta is Quinn underscore Murphy. And my Twitter is Quinn underscore Murphy underscore 26. I will link both of those down and his huddle. Do they stream y'all's games? I know you're at a new school this year. If they stream any of your games, please send me the link. I will post them, and I will let everyone know where they can go watch you because I know Canes fans just saw you rip it for 40 minutes. They're going to be in my DMs. Are who are you playing this week? Can we watch them? So I will try to keep everybody updated with who you're playing uh, throughout this year. Again, thank you so much. I wish you nothing but success and full health for this junior season. Go tear it up again, and we're going to run it back and talk about how you did it. Yes, sir. Appreciate your time. I, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it too, bro. Thank you so much. Obviously, we wish you nothing but success in your throwing session right after this and in your junior season. Everyone, go follow Quinn right now. Hit that like button, hit subscribe, then go follow him. Do not bother me mid-season when you're like, he just threw four touchdowns. What's his Twitter? It's in the description right now. You can click it. You can go straight to it. Everyone, make sure you keep up with him, whether it's Texas, Baylor, LSU, a and Miami, Florida State. It is a this is a recruit that you are going to want to continue to follow. So go hit that follow button right now. Like, share and subscribe. We out.